Hi, welcome back to the bench. Just thought I'd uh, throw the uh, the camera on while I was doing this. Um, I for work um, we're doing a couple of things and uh, simultaneously as always. One of the things we're doing is we're doing a bit of uh, compliance testing, and one of the things that we uh, wanted to try and take a look at was the uh, conducted electromagnetic uh, interference or electromagnetic emissions uh, from the device that we make. And we ordered officially a, a box from te Textbox, uh, one of their LSIN uh, boxes. Um, but unfortunately, it's only coming on Friday. So what I decided to do, uh, and we'd like to get back to the uh, certification lab as fast as possible. So uh, we got a spec in at, um, at work. Uh, that we've uh, borrowed, but uh, got none of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and build one of these tonight. Um, I've already got me a handful of, oops, there you go, a handful of inductors. These are all supposed to be uh, 1.25 microhenry inductors, 10 amp. So I'm using, uh, well, maybe not quite uh, big enough for wire for this, but we'll see. Um, our product doesn't actually take or use 10 amps, so I'm going to, I'm sort of kind of cheating a bit here. I don't think I need that thick a wire um, for the DC on this. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, use slightly thinner wire. I do have thicker copper wire, which I could use if I need to in a pinch, but um, yeah, I'm just going to try and avoid having to use it if I can. If I can. Um, this should be more than good enough. I think, uh, well, I'm not going to be passing 10 amps. I think our product does uh, about two amps pulsed, uh, so, and very small pulses so we should be okay. Um, so each of these inductors is eight turns, um, or at least they spec it out as eight turns. I don't know what exact what exact uh, ferric or toroid cores they're using in theirs. In fact I've never actually seen it. Uh, it'll be interesting on Friday to see how close or far I am away from however I designed it. I know they've got a PCB in there, so of course I'm not going to get dead on, but um, it'll be interesting. I, I'm not even sure this is going to work, to be honest, but I figured, well, it's not going to take me very long to do this. So I figured if I can get us back in the lab even a day earlier, that'll be better for us. Um, so we're sort of on a deadline for our product in the manufacturing cycle, so we kind of have to get this thing done and dusted. Um, and I'm by no, no means a hardware guy or even an electromagnetic compliance testing guy, but hey, why not give it a try, right? The worst thing that can happen is you fail. And in this case, we're going to fail whether I try hard enough or not if I don't make it, so I might as well go for it. All right, we're a bit further along now. Um, so this is what uh, I'm going to actually build this uh, little device in. So, well, should I get that? Okay, this will be good. So, um, of course, the idea is you've got power in or whatever power in on one of these things, and then your DUT is connected to the other side. So, these bus bars, if you will, will be connected together. Uh, the ground is going to be solid, and I'm going to actually solder it into the case here. So, it's also grounded with a shield here. So, um, this will with the top cover here, this should prevent any sort of EMI from entering the device, so we're only measuring the conducted uh, EM. Um, and I'm not entirely sure that's necessary or required, but I'm going to do it, so <laughs> that's the way it's going to be. Um, the pathway for the actual um, DC uh, goes through a few, uh, a few, goes through four coils, so these four inductors here uh, that I have. And um, so it's going to take actually a little bit of ingenuity to actually sort of squish them all in there. I'm thinking I'm going to actually put them all maybe in a line here, sort of, you know, tuk, 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 like this. Um, so I'll have to see how that's going to work. Um, if I do that, um, and I'll have to see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll go one, two, three, four, something like that. But anyway, in any case, th those four inductors are in the pathway between the uh, the positive, the two positive, uh, well, the positive power rail, 
and they're doing a lot of the, uh, the filtering uh, on one side. So of course I'm going to have to decide which one's going to be the DUST because the, uh, the probe output, the signal output is going to be tapped on that side or AC coupled into that side and then all of the inductors are going to be um, uh, after that point. So let's go get her done. Um, So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to shield the sense cable at all. I mean, I'm going to, it's going to be small. I'm going to take a small little piece of, uh, whoop -doo -doo. Oh, there we go, a little small piece of wire, and uh, just uh, solder it into this guy here, which is the uh, center tip point. I'm just going to screw it in there. It's not going to have to go far. It's only going to basically have to go about there. Um, maybe it'd be useful to have that as coax. I'm not sure. Um, in theory from what I can understand is anything that's either EMI or whatever that's coming out of the, uh, I mean, ideally we're, 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 we're filtering as much as possible the input. So maybe I'll need to set, you know, use coax on this. I'm not sure. I, I don't know yet. So I'm, I'm going to go with what I have, which is just a small little piece of wire. Um, the iron is nice and hot. So let's get to it. And this is friggin' small, TM. So we're gonna just go ahead and feed this through. Well, like I said, I've never really built one of these before. In fact, I never have. Not really, I just never have, period. So, I mean, this could go horribly wrong, or there could be so much wind it's not even funny. But I'm going to bet on the horribly wrong part, just because, well, you know. It's probably a lot more likely. Alright, so there we go. Nice and insulated. Alright, so. I'll just leave that like that for the moment. Now, for the tough part. Um, I gotta fit all of these four guys into here. Well, you can't see anything, so let's go down here. All right, so there we go. Um, so I have to fit all of these four inductors into here somehow. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is using these little pads. Um, so the idea would be is I'll cut these leads fairly short, and then. S position these pads in such a way and what I would probably do is I will probably position this outside of the case uh, and then get a small piece of PCB or something uh, actually I'm not sure I'll do that I'll have to see yeah I don't know I don't know what I'll do yet maybe uh, it would be really nice if I could just fit it right in like that, so solder everything else outside and just go blink and fit it in. If that doesn't work, what I'll do is I'll pull these two out and then I'll just slip it in. But ideally, yeah, so ideally this thing when it's all soldered in will just sort of sit right underneath here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we will bend these guys sideways. And up. So I'm going to think about this for a second and I'll be right back. <clears throat> Alright, well, I totally forgot to turn the camera on. So, anyway, this is how I decided to go in here. I um, started from here first. Put a bit more light on there. Here we go. So, I started off by coming onto this inductor first, chaining to these three, going down to this one, and then coming back up out here. So, if we're really lucky, we should now be able to measure a near zero resistance between this point and this point. That's good. And I shouldn't measure anything. Oh, nuts. That's not good. Darn it. Time to troubleshoot. So we've got clearly a pad touching somewhere. Or, the nastier possibility, that one of these two jacks here is touching. 
I don't think that's the case. So this one's this one, this one's fully isolated. This one's possible. Uh, hmm. All sorts of not good. All right. No worries. Well, maybe a bit of worries, huh? Hmm. All right, I'm gonna go and really quickly unsolder if I can. One of those leads, if I can't, I'll cut it. I prefer not to do that, so I can get an idea of which side the problem's on. Which side I gotta work on? Shooting, here we come. Uh, let's see if I can't get this guy off on this side. I think it's this one. I'm I'm obviously not certain until we find it, but I'm thinking it's this guy. But whoopsies. Ay, ay, ay. Could also be a break in the insulation. Whoopsies. On one of these guys. Hope not. Let's see. Oh, I didn't do it. Yeah, I bet you that's the problem here. This uh, feels about right. I'm going to help up here. It's nine o'clock and I got a ways to go with this before this is working, which is a little bit scary. Come on, come on, there you come. All right, so now, And if this is the problem, which is probably pretty hot now too. Oh yeah. But now. Ha. Alrighty. Let us gingerly, using the appropriate needle nose pliers, see if I can't gently coax all this stuff apart. I mean, this is a good reason, and a bad reason, to sort of do full assembly like this, but, you know, when you're building a one-off project like this, not, sometimes not much you can do. You kind of have to build it in place. My alternative was using another huge box, but uh, I was really trying to avoid having to do that. Okay, let's, see. let's pop that out. Let's see what the problem is. Yeah, you see the issue here, and I bet you that's the problem. So I bet you I, I threw some heat shrink around there to try and stop that problem, but I bet you it's this. So I don't know if you can be able to see that, but. It's popping ever so slightly over. So what would happen is when you put that up against it, it's basically touching. Um, hmm. That is a pain. I wonder if these guys are in deeper. No, not really. Hmm. The only real solution here, I think, is to make the hole wider. Or, as I did, 
holes aren't perfectly centered because, you know, no good at soldering and stuffs. So one thing I could do is just kind of finger it around a little bit. Uh, alternative is the other thing I could do, which is what I think I'm going to do, is use my friend the black electrical, or, well, the red electrical tape, and see if we can't find a solution using this stuff. Shot number two. This stuff's amazing. stuff. So the idea would be, I can't remember where the hell everything is. Why are these two things different sizes? Who on earth designed these things? They actually go on in two different sizes? Pomona, I think. This is the most ridiculous, ridiculous thing. And they're literally, yeah, I don't know if you'll able to see that here. Let me take this off. And they're literally punched in different, two, oops, in two different heights. I guess the uh, po other possibility is I p had two of these at one point and I put them together the wrong, the wrong one or the wrong one. Oh well. Alright. So, give me a quick score there. Quick score there. Jam this right on top like this. Hopefully, do the business. And hopefully at the same time not be too thick to notice when we're screwing the sticker back together. So take a little bit of uh, caution when reassembling this. Rather than throwing said caution at the wind. And of course the pain of butt also means that this has to go together in a particular way. Now that I know this can happen, I'm going to be more careful when I put it together. And I will attempt to sort of jimmy it around a little bit until I can find the right place where it's not touching. <laughs> this is a high quality design. Thankfully, I am not going to be putting this into mass production or anything that even rem res remotely resembles that. here. Aha! She is silent. Alright, good. So now we can start screwing the sucker in. It's old saying. Tight until she cry, until she 
snaps and then come back come off a half a turn quarter turn all right let's, before we do all this stuff let's go do another quick test all right life is good all right so let's get this thing sucker back together and you barely even notice that jeez it's like it was perfect perfectly put together at the factory <laughs> Right. Okay. So this one can come back in a little bit. This one definitely will have to come back in. Let's get that connection all nice and toasty. Okay. Another quick test. That's good. That's also good. All right. She good, huh? Okay. Now for the real pain in the ass. Uh, okay. So there's a few things here that I wanted to do. The first one was I'm gonna want to. Uh, I'm gonna want to decide which one's which. So, so by that I mean which one is going to be the DUT and which one's going to be the power. I think I'll take the nice big chunky ones for power. Power in here, DUT here, device under test there. So that means that this guy here is going to be tapping off this one right here. Um, and actually that's a total lie because actually what's actually going to happen is I, I'm going to take a double pad, oopsies, like this, plop that down somewhere. Well, actually I'm going to solder in a couple of the res I'm going to put the, so what I'm going to do is, because it's AC coupled, so this thing's going to come, so actually what this thing will do is it'll come down, right down like this, uh, down, so anyway, I'll show you in a second to a pad like this and then from the pad you know I'm not entirely sure which one would be better do I go direct from here hmm. decisions 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 I'm not entirely sure I like the idea of a whack of fly like a bunch of wires flying around and flapping around in the breeze so there's more places to solder stuff here so I'd much rather do more work here if I need to Well, you know what? Screw it. I mean, what I'll do is, so what I'll do is this. I'm going to come in with another handy dandy. Actually, maybe I'll just actually clip this sucker. But anyway, I'm going to come in with a flying lead of wire and just kind of drop drop a connection across. Um, which means this one only needs to go about E like that. So I can lob this one off around here. And oh, wire strippers, which are because I'm a weenie there we go and so we need uh, that's not for that uh, yes so we need one of those we need one of those Oh, 220. Oh, I had 220 in that card. Oh. Well, look at that. Don't even know what I have in my own cupboard. There we go. All right. So, this is the one nanofarad. Now, this one's actually rated for 250 volts. I forget these are supposed to be rated for. There's something like, it's something pretty high. Again, this is not safe by any stretch of the imagination, so don't use this darn design anywhere where it's where it's important. Which is what I'm going to tell the guys at work. Um, just because I'm, I, I don't have the TVS, um, I don't have.
some of the components we need. And you know what? Maybe that's important. I'm not sure. But this might just be use a healthy dose of smarts. Because again, this is not meant to be something that will withstand use in certification. This is just meant to be a quick thing where we can go in and test and see what's going on. And we're only interested in the AC coupled noise, so it's not like we're, need, we're worried about you know, massive voltages or anything like that. Uh, and any AC coupled noise here back into or from our device into the line will almost guaranteed, certainly guaranteed, be not that much in terms of power or you know, amplitude or whatever. So I'm not really worried about any of these things. Maybe I should be. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should, but not. blob of salt right there. Well, not the worst job I've ever done soldering three caps together on two pads like that. Maybe the only time I've ever done that. Eh. Basically, sucker in. That's screwed in nice and tight, so let's go ahead and tack that down. Like this. There we go. Alright. So now, um, there's a couple of things. I'm going to have to put, I still need a ground between, well, obviously my grounds. I need to tie the ground off to here, which I will do. Um, I think, however, yeah. yeah, I think I'm gonna, which I might just use a piece of scrap. This is one nice thing about having uh, thrill components is to have a, a bunch of scrap beads like this. Um, see, this one I could even use. I could even use a nice big fat copper bus bar right between the two. Yeah, maybe I'll do that actually. Um, but for the other one, maybe something a little bit less insane. Perhaps something that's already cut down a little bit. That'd be nice. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that worked out well. So we'll go we'll just tie it off. Oh, actually, I suppose to do this properly, we'll tie this one off. Actually, maybe a bit too short there, huh? Don't hear that. Don't hear dudes say that all the time, do you? There we go. Yeah, good enough. Alright, so we'll go ahead and lob a little off that. Let's see if I can't try and <laughs> get something soldered to the inside of this. Yeah, that might not work. Hello. No reason it shouldn't, aside from, well, maybe not. Hmm. That worked. 
use that instead. Oopsies. Hmm. Okay. Now I still need to get a lead all the way over there, so I'm going to go do that right now while I still have a bit of extra room in here. Go lob that like that. Uh, I don't need a huge amount, so maybe something like this would be good. that's the right way to do it so we'll see <laughs> maybe this particular uh, wire this connection here that goes to uh, you can't see off camera but, um, this connection here which goes from the AC couple well, it couples the uh, DUT side of the uh, input or I should say the, <laughs> the DUE the device under test side um, and it um, it uh, connects up to the caps and AC couples it into the output here, or the, uh, the probe output. So, you know, what are you going to do, right? when you uh, <clears throat> use a bit of heat, hot glue unsets. Trap for young players. So your nice little islands you've hot glue, <laughs> you've crazy glued are now coming done. technique that I've used to post fix this kind of stuff is to just press it down and then just tack the edges with some crazy glue. Eh, that would work fine too. Okay. So we're going to float this off as much as we can. Okay. Now comes the fun part. How do you tack a bus bar between these two suckers? take off a bit more, you can't add it back. Oops. Oh, hair of a whisker. The ever so hair of a whisker off. I'll tell you what, that's almost friction fit. That's good enough for me. Before I do all that fun stuff, I do have a couple other things to do here. So there, geez, as I promptly lose the resistance. There we go. I have a 1K resistor which is going from that guy off to ground. So we'll just go ahead and do that then.
performing on lead. That bus bar will go in. Uh, let's see. That'll go in here. Can big fat soldering iron get down there? Oh yeah. here and a bit over Whoopsies. Almost ten o'clock. I don't know we'll finish. Nah, I'm joking, of course we're gonna finish. Solder in. All right, that sucker's in. Okay. Now the only other major part, which I'm not entirely sure, it might be protection, but I'm not sure. No, maybe not. Anyway, uh, and that actually might be more complicated than I thought, because <laughs> so I have to get in between some of these suckers. Yeah, that wasn't so, so smart. So I'm not entirely sure this circuit's super needed. Um, There is. <laughs> well, that will be a total pain in the butt. Oh, no, it won't. No, never mind. Oh, yes, it will. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Alright, I need to get a 30. Okay, oh, yeah. well. Shit just got real, so I'm gonna go try and finish this off and I'll be back later. <laughs>